Good afternoon, everyone. Today is International Human Rights Day as declared by the United Nations. However, do you know how many human rights treaties has the Singapore government actually signed and ratified? The fact is, Singapore government does not sign and ratify any human rights treaty unless all other ASEAN countries have already signed and ratified them. Why is it that Singapore claiming to be the leader cannot be the leader in signing and ratifying and respecting fundamental human rights? First, we do not have our fundamental rights to freedom of expression. For example, our rights to freedom of speech. On Facebook, you can make a Facebook posting that is only to your friend. But the Singapore government can claim that this particular posting is actually not private. And when they claim that it's not private, it means that it is public and they can use it against you. Third, we do not have our fundamental rights to freedom of assembly. Our rights to freedom of assembly is only limited to Speaker's Corner that is inside Hong Lim Park. That means if you protest at Hong Lim Park but not inside Speaker's Corner, you can be charged for that. On top of that, one person protesting in Singapore can also be arrested and charged for illegal assembly. Fourth, our rights to public housing. In Singapore, recently, the government claimed that you can buy a HDB flat for 99 years lease at $8,000. Such propaganda is being published on printed media, online and everywhere. Do you really think that you can buy a HDB at the price of $8,000? How many of such HDB BTO has the government been selling for $8,000? Is it only one unit and they claim that the starting price is from $8,000 but the second unit onwards is $200,000? Is this being transparent? Are they accountable to the public? What exactly is the cost of building a HDB? Fifth, our rights to public health care. In Singapore, the government has a false insurance scheme. And in this compulsory insurance scheme, they rename it from MediShield to MediShield Life, which means that the people have to pay for the premium throughout their whole life. And this premium actually doubled after they rename it, and the premium increased over the years. Can you imagine when you are old and you have to pay for the premium that's about $1,000 every month? Is this reasonable? The government did not disclose how many people have they arrested and jailed because they couldn't afford to pay the premium. Of course, too many average and above average Singaporeans out there, they will say that, yes, you can use CPF to pay for the premium. But what about the rest? As a country, shouldn't we be growing together? We have the highest paid Prime Minister in the world. They fight for their own million dollar salary, saying that if you do not pay them millions, they will become corrupted. But do they fight for your salary? Do you have minimum wage? No, they have minimum a million dollars. Do you have independent labor unions? No. Do you have independent student unions? No. There was a time we used to have independent labor union and independent student unions. The independent labor unions will fight for the right and fair wage of the workers. The independent student unions will fight for the welfare of general public. But what have they gone down to now? Not only that, we have the worst, longest working hour and the least amount of sleep. In fact, we have the lowest birth rate in the whole world as well, even behind North Korea and China. If Singapore is a good country, why are people not producing? Why is our marriage rate below 50%? If houses are cheap and houses are reasonable and houses are affordable to the public, why don't they buy a house and set up their own family? Because the cost of living in Singapore has been the highest for years. Is this right? Should we continue to let such a government rule us when the people are not growing together as a whole? On this day, on our Human Rights Day, let's think about it. How are we going to fight for our fundamental human rights? And how? Are we going to prevent, stop the government from violating our rights? Thank you.